Hey everybody, it's Mike. All right, so the title of this video is Untreated Borderlines Will Feast Upon the Empath. So before I go any further, I am not a mental health professional. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. And you should not take anything that I say on this channel as uh, a substitute for uh, working with a mental health professional and any actions you choose to take based on what I say is completely your responsibility. I am somebody who was in a very toxic relationship with an untreated borderline. It was the most toxic experience of my entire life and you can tell by the gray hairs on my beard that's it's been a while. And the reason why I'm making this channel is to help other people like me, non-borderlines, if they've been in a, a romantic relationship with a borderline or if they are currently in one. Did I say weren't? It, either way, if you were in and or still are in, what I want to do is to share my thoughts and my uh, experience and uh, my observations so that you can be free of that. Um, I have seen with my own eyes what happened with me even after I was out of the relationship. I was, I, I, I was damaged in ways I had never experienced before. I have seen um, non-borderlines come out of relationships with borderlines and I've seen them actually become physically ill um, over the stress. People can't seem to get their, their selves back, their sense of self back. So that's the point of this channel is to help people in those conditions. Having said that, I am not um, somebody who judges anybody and I don't judge nor do I vilify borderlines. Um, I don't know about other personality disorders. The person I was with, I am convinced, was simply a quiet borderline. There may have been other things there, but that's what I believe she was. Uh, and. Um, now that I've done the work and I'm in a state of recovery from my codependence in that regard, uh, I don't have any anger towards her. I don't have any judgment towards her. She's not an evil person. She actually, I believe she actually loved me and I believe that she wanted to love me and be loved by me. And I believe that borderlines are just like everybody else in that they deserve to be loved. But it's extremely important that we understand uh, what we're dealing with here. So I'm going to get to the crux of that. What I, again, what I find most surprising and interesting is that even though I have not tailored this channel towards borderlines in any way, other than if they want to hear what it's like to be on the other side and, and if that's helpful to them, you know, you're welcome to listen. But what I find really amazing is that there's a few borderlines, at least, who are in recovery, who are coming back to the channel and they're sharing their experiences. And um, I find it incredibly helpful. And um, it's really great to see that both sides can heal from apparently from what I'm doing here with this channel. So I want to keep doing that. So today we're going to be talking about the empath and how the borderline will feast upon the empath, the untreated borderline. The untreated borderline will feast upon the empath. Now, a lot of people, and there's no shortage of it, no matter how many times I explain my definition of codependence, no matter how many times I explain it, people still want to fight with me and say they're not codependent. So let me give you again my definition of codependence. Codependence is a relationship dynamic. So did you hear that? It's a relationship dynamic. It's not a judgment on you. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means it's a relationship dynamic wherein one person ends up taking the slack for somebody else's dysfunction. That's it. If you are with a borderline for more than a couple of days, you will have to take up the slack for their dysfunction, which means that you are a codependent. 
whether or not you're a good person, a moral person, an honest person, a dishonest person, an empath, or anything else will not change the fact that you, by definition, are in a relationship dynamic where you are enabling somebody's dysfunction. Okay? <laughs> Why is that so hard to understand? In any case, a lot of people want to say, I'm not a codependent, I'm an empath. So I'm just going to read a comment because those of you who've already heard it, I've already heard it, but let me read the comment. So um, bear in mind, if you come onto my channel and you leave a comment, you're leaving a comment for the whole world to see. So you, I assume you are open to having a discussion about it, which means I'm going to read it and talk about it. If it helps to bring about awareness and understanding that will be helpful for other people. So if you don't want me to do that, don't leave a comment. And so I've made the promise and I'm going to stick to that promise, which is if somebody comes on here and if they are uh, aggressive or just belligerent or abusive, I'm going to end up blocking you um, just because I don't want to deal with it. If you are passive aggressive, I'm going to point it out for everybody to see, because it's a good way for us to look at our own codependence when somebody gets passive aggressive like that. Uh, if you are in denial, I'm going to point it out. Of course, that's my opinion, but I'm going to point it out. And if I believe that you lack education and understanding, I'm going to point that out as well. The reason why I do that is because most of the time, most of people's comments are they're representing a, like a bunch of other people who aren't commenting who feel the exact same way. So it gives me an opportunity to bring into the discussion um, an ability for us to examine and look at it. My whole point isn't about who's right or who's wrong. I could care less what words you use, seriously. I don't care if you want to call borderline personality disorder a disease or if you want to call it a dysfunction or if you want to call it a trauma response or a, a disorder, I don't care. I don't care if you want to call being a, a partner to a borderline, a codependent, a trauma responder, a, a caretaker, I could care less what word you use. The only thing I care about is, are you happy? That's it. So I've found in order for me to be happy, I have to look at things a certain way, and I believe I'm, I'm doing my best to look at what is and what is not accurate about this dynamic and I have seen with my own eyes that people who don't have a way to work through the damage that has come to them by being in these uh, codependent dynamic relationships that it can affect you for years and, and may even stay with you. So the whole point of me bringing up people's comments isn't to uh, to fight or to, you know, anything like that. It's about, let's look at the truth. Thanks for bringing that up. Thanks for your opinion. Now let's analyze it. If you are unhappy, if you are still in pain, if you are still longing over your borderline ex, you're not healed. Healed means healed. I don't have any pain when I think about my borderline ex. I don't long for her. I'm not angry with her. I'm not resentful uh, at her. I don't think badly of her. I think much better of her now than I did, you know, the first couple of months afterwards. So I'm in a state of recovery and I'm happy with my life. Do you want that? Great. I'll share with you how I did it. If you are in a relationship with a borderline and you're happy, then this channel isn't for you. So feel free to go somewhere else. All right. If you don't like what I say, watch another channel. Plenty of other channels to watch. All right. So um, here's what this person says. This is in regards to my video BPD. Loving a borderline can make you physically ill. The emotional toll of, I guess, dating a borderline. It's, you know, listen, I throw in a bunch of different um, videos and sometimes um, this one was a response to somebody's request who asked me to talk more about the physical because I had a strong physical horrific like response to 
being with a borderline that I'd never experienced before. So I did a whole video on that. Now, a lot of non-borderlines um, who aren't healed, especially, love it when I go down that path because they love want they want they they love pointing fingers at the borderline, how screwed up the borderline is. But when it comes to looking at themselves, uh, not everybody wants to look at themselves as sharply as I do. Bear in mind anything that I say about codependence or if I see something and I make an observation, which is my opinion about somebody and I believe that they are codependent, whatever it is I'm saying about them is true about me. So it's not a condemnation. Okay? So having said that, here we go. This person, Alex Moon says, if they discard you for loving them, caring for them, and treating them right, why do they try to hoover you back? And then he goes into some, uh, some experience. I think this is the second time he's brought that up. So that, you know, you keep talking about it, it means something. Anyway, we don't need to talk about that because I, honestly, I don't know what that has to do with the question. But the question, I saw on the question, Alex, based on the question, um, I came to the conclusion that Alex had not been in any kind of therapy or done any 12-step work uh, looking at his codependence, why he was in it. Because this is the kind of question somebody asks um, when they don't understand what borderline personality disorder is. If, you, if they discard you for loving them, caring for them and treating them right, there's an assumption in all of that. Again, going to such lengths to describe it, to give it this kind of morality, because he's giving morality to it. He's saying that he is full of care. He's treating them right. He's loving them. Why do they try to hoover you back? So again, if you understand that borderline personality disorder is a mental illness, and you understand what causes it, then you don't have to ask that question. The only people who ask that question are the people who still want to get back with their borderline ex and they haven't resolved the reasons that got them into it in the first place. And um, the fact that he needs to point out that he was caring for them, loving them and treating them right. If you hear me talk about how I got involved, um, I'm gonna tell you that I got involved with my borderline ex, not because I was loving her right, caring for her and treating her right, although all those adjectives are accurate in terms of if you were to watch me interact with her because I was I was a gentleman I was extremely kind I was very loving I was very patient I you know I did all that stuff and I'm not judging any of that those were beautiful things that I did but it doesn't take away the fact that I also had my own personal selfish motives for doing it and on top of that I had deep codependent unresolved codependent issues that had me chasing after somebody that was so broken. And I shared with you that I, you know, I grew up in an alcoholic family, alcoholic father, uh, codependent mother, perhaps, if not borderline, very possibly uh, NPD uh, brother who was physically abusive. And I survived that. Uh, there are other things that, that got me into other 12-step programs, which I won't mention here. And um, then a couple years back, two and a half years ago, the love of my life, the perfect soulmate that's ever existed, uh, died. And so I was just broken on the inside. And so that sort of brought to the surface the last, hopefully, the last unresolved mommy issues that I had. So I was walking around with a hole inside of me and along came this borderline. And she came at me and phew, we were in love. I chased after her and I followed through on her love bombing me because of my severe emotional, psychological, codependent issues. So bear in mind, if I point that out in you, I'm not judging you. I am not saying when I talk about it, I don't say, I loved her perfectly and I was so moral and I was so good and all she did was hurt me. You may hear me talk about that because there's some truth to that, but I'm not unaware of the other part. If you are an untreated uh, uh, codependent, guess what? You're only going to be talking about how you were perfect and you did everything right and you were the loving person and they did all the bad things that they did. Why did that happen? I'm at a loss. 
That's how I know you're untreated. So if somebody asks, if they discard you for loving them, caring for them and treating them right, why do they try to hoover you back? I already knew. So I responded and I said, Alex, so am I right in assuming you have not seriously pursued any treatment for codependence? No counseling, no 12 steps, right? And then I said, it doesn't matter why they try to hoover you back. You can't be hoovered if you are conscious of your codependence and if you have clear boundaries. In other words, you can't be hoovered if you're in a state of recovery, having done the work. So I didn't mention anything about him being codependent or not. So he responds back and he says, I'm going to be very honest with you and I am a person that does admit his flaws. I am not a codependent, but I am, however, empathetic. Having empathy is being human. Listen to the generalities here. This is, you know, this is true with untreated borderlines and with untreated codependents. There's just this, these, these generalities and this morality and a complete lack of willingness to look at yourself. That's what I'm seeing here. Uh, so he's going to be honest with you, and I'm a person that does admit his flaws. I am not codependent, but I am, however, empathetic. Having empathy is being human. It's about loving and caring for another, but you need to love yourself first and be secure with yourself in order to do that the right way. Now he's going to give his version of codependency, which is not the definition of codependency. Here's what he says. Codependency is a feeling of something missing within you and having low self-esteem. So in order to fill that void and have a sense of meaning in their life, uh, anyway, have a sense of meaning in their life, that you matter to the world. You give everything you have to another person to fill in that void. Codependents are controlling, manipulative, demeaning, and selfish in their own way. Empathy on the other hand, is showing understanding, compassion, kindness, and mercy without any strings attached by treating others as fellow human beings, while also helping out a fellow man that is struggling or standing up for the weak that can't defend themselves. I am very intuitive and I see through BS very quickly. However, when it comes to borderlines, I do believe they are the most intelligent when it comes to emotions and feeling about people and digging into their weaknesses and strengths when it comes to cluster B disorders. That is why they are super pros at manipulating people because they are very good at knowing what the other person wants or what motivates them and amplifying that. So no man, not everyone that falls into borderline traps or codependence. Plus the husband of hers was a priest who was also a covert narcissist and she was a borderline which made it even more difficult to catch on despite seeing some red flags. All right, so listen, the, I can, the BS is piling up really high. So I am going to say, I think, Alex Moon, uh, you fit the stereotypical, your definition, you even fit your definition of a codependent to a T. And I do see you as somebody who is either uneducated on what codependence and borderline personality disorder is. And I also see you as somebody that's very likely in denial. I'm not judging that either because codependence and BPD are both dysfunctions, disorders that have within them denial. Denial is the main factor. One of the, you know, my, my borderline ex had no problem uh, looking at the possibility that she might be, um, you know, that she might be uh, what's the word? Um, um, schizophrenic, uh, have um, uh, PTSD. She even said that she was uh, had uh, like chronic um, uh, anxiety. So she had no problem with any of those things. So she was willing to take on any you know psychological disorder or mental illness, except for borderline personality disorder. Codependents are the same way. They are not going to admit that they're codependent, but they'll say things like, I am empathic. So what does empathy mean? Empathy means to feel, it means to feel within, literally, to in-feel. 
And so somebody who's empathic picks up on other people's feelings. So if you're so good at picking up on other people's feelings, and according to you, the way you define borderlines, you define them as being really good manipulators who know how to play with your emotions and get what you want. How is it if you're so empathic, you can't pick up on their wanting to mess with you? So you just kind of destroyed that argument. You're the least empathic. Because I'm also intuitive as well. But when I'm not in my codependence, guess what? I can intuit when a borderline is coming my way or when somebody is manipulating me. The only reason that manipulation works is if you have a selfish desire that they are capitalizing on. That's how people sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. They come to you and they say, hey, I'm going to sell you the, the Brooklyn Bridge for $6. You start thinking to yourself, wow, that's really good. If you don't have greed, you're not going to buy the Brooklyn Bridge for $6. The only reason that people can fool you is if you have a personal agenda. So you want to present yourself as having no personal agenda. You are perfectly loving. Let's look at what you say here again. Empathy is showing understanding, compassion, kindness, and mercy without any strings attached. I don't believe for a second that you get involved. Now, I don't know if you're talking about a romantic relationship. If you are, it gets even weirder because of some of the things you say. But um, what are you doing getting involved with uh, somebody um, if you have no strings attached? If you have no strings attached, it means that they can't do anything to you. When you give a gift with no strings attached, they could take that gift and smash it on the ground in front of you. And you would say, well, no strings attached, you can do whatever you want with it. If you get your feelings hurt, it means you gave them a gift because you wanted something from them. We all do it. We give gifts to get love. There's nothing wrong with having strings attached. The problem is when you try to convince yourself you don't have any strings attached, that's when you set yourself up to get really hurt because you're in denial. Now, there's a thing called the conscious and the unconscious mind. You're, if I take you at your word, you're not consciously aware of having any strings attached and you are this amazingly empathetic person who is so moral and so pure that all he does is help others for no other reason than because they're human and he never wants anything from them and if that's true then how do you get your feelings so hurt it's impossible you can't have it both ways if i get my feelings hurt which is a human thing it means that i have an agenda and just the nature of romantic relationships means you have an agenda this is why teachers and um, uh, therapists don't get personally involved with their clients because the moment they do, they have an agenda. Because every human being, when you get involved with another person, you automatically have an agenda to get something back, whether that's love, friendship, sex. There's nothing wrong with having an agenda. The person who says they don't have an agenda is either deluded or lying. I don't think you're lying, but I do think you're deluded. Um, so you say, uh, let's see, um, that you, while also, help, uh, this is what an, empath, an empathetic person does, while also helping out a fellow man that is struggling or standing up for the weak that can't defend themselves. I hear this over and over again from, uh, from codependents who are in denial. I speak out for those who can't speak for themselves. How condescending of you. Who gave you the authority to take on everybody else's problems and speak out for all of the people that can't speak for themselves? You have no agenda. I'm just driven to protect all the innocent people. That's why I get emotionally enmeshed with these people and they hurt my feelings. Come on, man. It's starting to smell. You can't smell it? So I don't buy any of that for a second. Uh, but, and, and here's the other thing. You know, uh, when you, the way you, you uh, describe borderlines, you believe that they are the most intelligent when it comes to emotions and feeling about people and digging into their weaknesses and strengths when it comes to cluster P B disorders. That's why they are super pros at manipulating people. 
because they're very good at knowing what the other person wants. Now, you yourself are, are outing yourself here because it's absolutely true, this part of what you're saying. Knowing what the other person wants or what, or what motivates them and amplifying that. So what you want me to believe is that you're an innocent victim, and but you're this empath, but at the same time, you're getting hoodwinked by these cluster Bs. So what you call empathy, psychologists are going to call projection. So let me explain to you what projection is. Projection is when you see in other people your own feelings. And um, uh, when it comes to projecting onto, um, when, when the codependent projects onto the borderline, this love that you feel, this desire to caretake and nurture, that's actually you projecting onto them what you want for yourself. But your conscious experience is that you have all of this pure love with no strings attached for the borderline. And what that is, is that's your unconscious desire. You are asking for somebody to love you that way. And who's the only being in the world that can love somebody that way? A mother. So what does that tell you? I already know that your mom didn't give you that kind of love. I already know that, that you're still unconsciously waiting for your mom to love you unconditionally. Because that's what mothers do. When we don't get that from our mother, guess what happens? We either become a, a borderline or we become a codependent. And those aren't the only two options, but those are two options. If we become the codependent, then what ends up happening is we start to feel. You can see it in me. In these videos, when I talk about what the borderline goes through, sometimes I get emotional. Some of that is honest, but a lot of that is because I relate. So it's me projecting onto the borderline my own feelings of how horrific it was for me growing up and having my mom split on me and, you know, being put in an incubator when I was a newborn and, you know, being beat up by an older brother and all that. So when I hear about what borderlines go through, it makes me really sad because I relate, but it's also me projecting. We all do it. Uh, life wouldn't work if we didn't project. But you are projecting on the borderline when you are the one who's going to speak up and protect those who can't protect themselves and you don't realize how, how demeaning it is, how condescending and how presumptuous it is of you to decide you're the one with your red cape flapping in the wind. You're going to be the hero and you're going to save them. That's what got you into the problem to begin with. So to answer your original question, my friend, if they discard you for loving them, caring for them, and treating them right, why do they hoover you back? Why do they try to hoover you back? It shows you don't understand why they discard. Because they have a mental illness. They have a mental illness that prevents them from experiencing love without then experiencing the horrific pain they went through as infants for being abused and or discarded or um, abandoned. So it's not that hard to figure out. If you're asking the question because you can't figure it out, you're still wrestling why they did it to you. It means that you still have an emotional attachment. You still have an unconscious agenda to get something from them. Otherwise, you wouldn't be racking your brain trying to figure it out. So anybody listening to me, if you're still thinking about your ex going, why did they do it to me? I did everything. I gave this to them. I gave that to them. And they still, why did they? If you're still feeling like that, it means that you haven't healed the wound. It means you still want them. You still want them to love you, especially if you're angry. If you're full of rage at them for what they did to you, those evil, manipulative, sociopathic borderlines, how true is that or not? I don't know. It may be true. It may not. But the fact that you're so full of rage about it means that you want them to love you. You want them to take you back. And like many people who come on here, you are setting yourself up to be a serial borderline dater. I'm, I'm reading uh, comments from people who go from borderline to, to uh, NPD to borderline. You know, they, they just go from one to another. Doesn't that tell you something? Something's wrong inside of you. Because I can promise you, healthy people who have healthy boundaries, 
who have a healthy sense of self do not become easily manipulated by these pathological professional. Listen, the truth is, is that, yeah, there are people who are good manipulators, but manipulators, as you said, they find out what your agenda is, not your weakness. They find out what it is they, that you want, and they start to tr pretend to give you what you want. They appeal to your greed, your ego, your fear, your desire. If you, like you say, have no strings attached, then they, they will have nothing to manipulate. So to answer your question, the reason why you're so easily manipulated is because you have an unconscious agenda. And until you can be honest about that, you're always going to be a target for them. The easiest way to do that is to admit that you are a codependent, that you are powerless over that, and to take a look at it. You don't want to do that, so I don't know you. This is just my opinion. But my opinion is if you don't uh, get honest about it, there's a very good chance that somebody else will come along and keep doing this to you. So do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? You can argue with me about what codependence is or is not, and I don't really care. And if, if that makes you happy and keeps you safe, great. But if your way of looking at things keeps you getting your, your heart handed to you, you know, sliced up into little pieces, then maybe you want to take a look at changing your definition of who you are and, and looking at these other things that you may not want to admit about yourself. Let me tell you something else. If somebody is not in denial and you go to them and you say um, you're a codependent, they'll go, really, what's that? You'll explain it to them. They'll go, wow, I want to see if that's true about me or not. You know when somebody's in denial, when you tell them what a codependent is, and they go, I'm not that. That's not me. That may work for you, but that's not me. No, I'm definitely not. So let me just, like you said here, very emphatically, you say, so, so no, man, not everyone that falls into a borderline's traps are codependents. No, that's, that's the definition of codependent. You fell into the trap. Um, if you weren't a codependent, you would be going, really, tell me more. That's really interesting. Well, that's true about me, but that, I'm not sure about that. That may be a little bit, I, I, you know, maybe, maybe I am. If, you're, if you are and you're in denial, you're going to flat out reject from the beginning that you are. And you're going to come up with all these really fancy ways to try and say that I'm a codependent, but you're not. And what makes you so different from me? <laughs> I'm, a co I'm a really smart guy. I'm really smart. That may sound egotistical, but I'm really smart and I'm really intuitive. And I fell for the trap. The only reason I fell for the trap is because I'm a codependent. That's it. It has nothing to do with anything else. So, my friend, it doesn't matter how empathetic you are, how honest you are, or how you know, well you consciously admit your faults. I believe you. I believe that you are very honest. I believe that you have nothing but good intentions on a conscious level. And I believe that you do admit your flaws when you become aware of them. The question is whether or not you are aware of your unconscious issues and whether or not on an unconscious level you have unresolved codependence. Because if it's on an unconscious level, you won't consciously know it. That's the definition of unconsciousness. In fact, the only real answer anybody can say, like if somebody came to me and said, I think you're unconsciously this, the only real honest question I can say is, well, if that's true, I'm not aware of it. That's the most honest thing anybody can say. So if you're really being honest, the only true thing you can say is, well, Mike, um, if I'm a codependent, I'm not aware of it. And that's what I'm trying to say. I don't think you are. All right, that's it. So um, like I said, if you leave a comment on my channel, and I take that to mean you're willing to have a conversation about it. If you don't want me to talk about it, don't leave a comment. But I love comments. I love talking about it. I love this discussion. Um, and I love, you know, when people share something I don't know, which a lot of people do, I'll even talk about comments when somebody shares, hey, somebody gave me this really cool comment which taught me about this, this, and this. I'll do that as well. All right, that's it, guys. Uh, my three-step process. By the way, I'm putting together the 
Uh, the link you see up here, freedom.spirittau.com. I'm starting to put together um, the videos that I'm going to make just for that. I'm not done with it yet, but keep your eyes peeled. It will be coming. People have asked me. The reason why I put this together is that people asked me if I was willing to counsel. And I'm not a, I'm not a therapist. And working with BPD codependents and uh, working with BPDs is just not something I'm qualified to do. It takes a lot uh, of knowledge and training to keep that professional distance, and I don't know that I have that. So I don't think it would be helpful for me, even though I think I'm a great counselor, I don't think it would be a good idea for me to do that. So at this time, I'm not going to do that. But in response to those requests, I am going to make a video series addressing you know, in specific, really specific ways, what you can do. Uh, mindsets, understandings, exercises, meditations, things like that, that you can specifically do to heal yourself from the, the outfall of these toxic relationships. And before I go, my three-pronged approach, which you can start doing now, which is what I did, I believe that I am in a state of recovery, and if you want what I have, this is how I got it. Number one, Working with a therapist who knows how to deal with codependence of cluster B personalities. Number two, going to Codependence Anonymous. You can go to coda.org and you can start doing the uh, online Zoom meetings right now. Find a sponsor, work the 12 steps. Number three, have a daily spiritual practice. I don't care if it's going to church or reading the Bible or meditating or doing Qigong or yoga or... Uh, you know, if, if you're an atheist doing Buddhist um, meditation, uh, you know, whatever the hell it is that works for you. It's got to be a daily thing. Those three things. Therapy, 12 steps, daily spiritual practice. Pour yourself into that as best you can. You don't have to be perfect, but do the best that you can every day. And I guarantee you, you can not only be free from being manipulated by other people, they won't be attracted to you. But number two, um, you can be free of the pain. You, you'll, you'll be able to get rid of the pain, the resentment, the anger, the longing, uh, the anxiety. You'll be able, the, the guilt, you'll be able to get rid of all of it if you pour yourself into those three things. How long it takes, I don't know. But I guarantee you, if you do it long enough, you will see results. That's it for me. I will see you guys uh, next time. Thanks.